The City of Rochester Public Market is open all year long, but Summertime at the Market offers a variety of experiences and events for all ages and tastes. Jim Farr, Market Manager and Assistant Director of the City's Bureau of Recreation, is here to tell us all about it. Thanks for coming on, Jim. Oh, thanks for having me, Tiana. So we're, we're getting into the summer. Food Truck Rodeo is going. Uh, tell us about the Food Truck Rodeo. Well, they've been going really great this season. We just had one, in fact, last <laughs> night and had about 40 trucks there, about 5,000 people and wow. <laughs> it was uh, you know it's always a great night and it's uh, it was, so far we've been very lucky with the weather this year for every last Wednesday of the month it always seems to clear up for us and be a nice day so uh, you know it's a great family experience you can mm -hmm. come out you can bring a chair you can uh, sit and enjoy we have local bands we have local beer from Roarbox which sure. is right down the street in the market district and a variety of foods for you to try and 40 trucks do they rotate each uh, rodeo or are they different varieties and somewhat you know it's it's uh there's uh, we have some different ones that come in and try it and some others that are there all the time but most of the staples are there all the time the ones that you see around the city are there right. every time right and uh rain or shine rain or shine uh we have you know the sheds for cover so uh -huh. even if it rains we can still go how about uh, Bands on the Bricks? That's another great event coming yeah, up. Yeah, that, they start on Friday nights on, starting July 10th and go through August 7th. Uh, and it, again, this year, we have some of our traditional favorites. Uh, we're uh, teaming up with the Puerto Rican Festival Committee to do a Latin night. Mm -hmm. We have Donna and the Buffalo, which very are popular. very popular right. and have a huge following. Uh, we have a Dave Matthews tribute band coming and a Rolling Stone tribute band. It's right. the, the year of the tributes. And so it's it's, it's going to be a, another great season. And again, it's a free event. You can come down 6 to 10 on Friday night. Uh, we have food vendors there as well. We have some vendors selling other interesting mm -hmm. curiosities that you might be interested in. And, and just, you know, a great night to come out and enjoy the market. And, you know, we, we do a lot of these evening events to try to bring people to the market that may necessarily not come down there right. for the regular days. Right. And we're hoping that they, you know, come down and realize and see what a fun place it is. And they come back and shop there and really come to the market what it, for what its real purpose is mm -hmm. to provide good, fresh, nutritious food. What should people know, especially when they're coming now into one of the more popular events, what should they know about parking and getting to the market? Well, uh, you know, we, we try to tell people to use the uh, Sio Street instead of Union Street, even on Saturdays, too, if you're coming down when it's mm -hmm. busy. You know, we did a couple of years ago expanded the parking lot, so there's another entrance all on, on Sio Street. Okay. So if you, instead of, you know, a lot of people go to uh, East Main Street and come down Union Street if you're coming from the west side. If you come and get off on Sio Street and come down Sio Street, it's much easier easier and there's almost always parking in that mm -hmm. lot and we run a shuttle on shuttle. on Saturdays and also for the evening events uh, to pick people up over in that lot over there so that's easy you know the easiest way to get and if you're coming from the east side and come down Railroad Street there's a lot of there's uh, some city lots in the market but there's some paid lots there along Railroad Street and uh, you know sometimes it's easier to pay two or three dollars and, and and just enjoy the evening than try to fight for a spot but mm -hmm. for, especially for the food truck rodeos I suggest folks come early uh, come people hungry. the the, <laughs> the veteran food truck f f uh, attendees now start coming around four o'clock even though oh, the wow. event doesn't start till five right. and not so much for the parking but be, they want to be able to get in, in, line, get and, in line and be able to get to the, the some of the most popular trucks have some pretty long lines and mm -hmm. uh, so they want to get there early and be able to get their food so what sort of planning goes behind um, special events at the market? You mentioned it's the year of the tributes for bands <laughs> on the bricks. How do you guys plan special events at the market? Well, you know, we get together and we have a special events and marketing person, Evan Lowenstein, at the market, and then and the market we have a promoter that helps us with booking some of the bands there and things. And we mm -hmm. just get together early in the spring and start talking about you know what what we can f what, who's going to be in the area this year, what kind of budget we have, who can we get for sponsors. And, mm -hmm. and how we can make it work. We also try to look at make, bringing in diverse groups so that we bring different demographics into the market as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to just go with the same old formula year after year. Sure. We want to make sure that we're not only providing entertainment for everybody, but also, you know, from a selfish standpoint from the market, we're always trying to introduce different new people customers. to the market and new customers to the market. So right. we're always trying to make sure we mix it up a little bit. And when that happens and you do meet new customers what's their reaction what do they 
tell you about the public. Well, there's, you know, there's, we have people just last night at the food truck rodeo. It's amazing how many people haven't been to the market in right. 30 or 40 years. Or, you know, there's really a generation that didn't grow up in the city with the tradition of coming to the market and so to have them come back there and see that you know there's uh, all the changes that have been made over the last 15 or 20 years that it's really a very different place and the excitement and all the other businesses that have uh, now established themselves around the market it you know they really are excited I think and amazed of the, that it's not the place that they remembered that years mm -hmm. ago it's really more than that now it is that but it's a lot more besides Right. Uh, one of my favorite events is the garage sales at the market. Tell us how uh, that event works. Well, it's uh, every su just about every Sunday in the summer with the exception of Labor Day. And then we have a couple of uh, Sundays in September when we have other events going on uh, that, that they're not there. But I, you come down and it's uh, $25 for a 10 by 30 uh, foot spot. Okay, uh, so if you, if you have stuff to sell. You can, you know, we, we ask you to call ahead and register, okay. but you still can come even the day of the sale on Sunday. Oh morning the sales go from eight till two on Sundays if you want a spot on Sunday get there at six o'clock and we can usually hook you up somewhere in, in the market and mm -hmm. you know it's a it's a quite an interesting mix because I would say 50 or 60 percent of the folks there are, are people that are really bringing stuff from their houses or church groups or scout groups or whatever mm -hmm. that are selling stuff and the other 40 percent is probably dealers that do shows all over the place so you have a mix of you know folks that are real really actually people bringing stuff like they would at their their house and, mm -hmm. and and then people that do a lot of treasures to be found what's the yeah. most interesting thing you've seen uh, at the garage sales at the market oh I don't know that's a tough question <laughs> <laughs> I uh, or unique <laughs> or unique I, I mean there's some great uh, some great old furniture tools if, if you're into tools uh, and, and fishing a lot of people love old fishing equipment and there's a couple vendors that come often with a, a lot of old fishing lures hand tied lures and old rods and reels and uh, so it's you know it's really a real diversity of stuff mm -hmm. that's there and, and we still do have there's usually a few farmers there that are uh, selling produce as well and uh, throughout the summer you'll still have bedding plants and hanging baskets there on Sundays mm -hmm. too and most most of the, the market restaurants and other features are open, so it's it's an it's a you know whole another day at the market. We usually have about a hundred vendors for that, so it's it's mm -hmm. a good mix. Do you have a favorite day or a favorite event at the market? At the market, well, you know my. One of my favorite ones is the one that we do every year with uh, Food Link in the f in the fall, the Festival of Food, yes. which this year will be September 21st. Mm -hmm. And you know, for that event, we bring in uh, 60 or 70 restaurants, 30 or 40 wineries. Now you're you, now with a number of distilleries and cideries and all the other mm -hmm. um, you know uh, craft breweries in the area. It's it's exciting and and it's a it's a great event. It's a great fundraiser for Food Link, but it's also a if you like to eat and sure. taste a little cider and wine, yeah, that's and a fun one. <laughs> it's a fun one, and it's packed, and it's packed, and it's <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Uh, but just you know, my f the regular Saturday at the market is hard to beat, uh, mm -hmm. especially in the summertime. Uh, you know, it's not unusual to have forty thousand people through there on a Saturday in the summer, and uh, it's a great place for people watching, and a great place to run into a r probably more diversity than you'll find any place else in this region it's uh you know we had a university of rochester um, anthropology class do some polling for us one saturday a few years ago there and uh they identified 29 different languages as wow. native languages of uh, shoppers at the market That's that something. day and uh so it's it's great and it's a great spot to come and and, and support local agriculture mm -hmm. and really get great deals on 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 the freshest produce in the in the area and you mentioned Food Link, and I uh, understand that the market partners with community organizations such as the Open Door Mission. What's going on with that this year? Yeah, we for the bands are actually for the food truck rodeos. We're partnered with the Open Door Mission, and they're there every night, and they're handing out information about their their organization. But they're also when folks are there, they can buy five dollar gift tokens and donate them to uh, the Open Door Mission, and then the mission actually uses those to come back and buy uh, food and produce for their meal program. So. 
it's a great way for, that you can help support the mission. Uh, and with Bands on the Bricks this year, we're working with the Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Okay. And they're going to be down there do, with their child ID program. They're also going to mm -hmm. be a couple Saturdays at the market uh, doing the child ID program. And again, just trying to spread the word about what uh, their organization does and what they do for in the community. So we, we like to partner every year with a different not-for-profit and, and try to help somebody else you know, get their word out sure. too. Sure, and now is the the Gospel Jubilee coming back to the public market? Yeah, this July year? Sunday, July twenty sixth, and okay. uh, it, you know it's hosted by the Elam Gospel Choir, and which is world famous. They've gone last year; they went to Paris and Italy, and uh, they are known uh, internationally, mm -hmm. and, and so they are able to attract some really great choirs and sing, single singers down here. And it's and it's Sunday afternoon from 4 to 7. It's free again. It's a great family event. Bring your chairs. All events are free. All events are free. Mm -hmm. they, um, they'll have some good food vendors down mm -hmm. there. They, it's, it, the city helps out with it, but it's really run by the, the gospel groups and, and, and Elam, Elam Church. So it's, uh, it's a great event. Mm -hmm. um, finally, uh, what would you say to someone who's not been to the city of Rochester Public Market? What would you say to get them down there? Well, I, it's, again, it's a fun place. It's some of the best food you can find anywhere, and, and and really just the diversity of people and the diversity of activities that are going on. On a Saturday, we also have groups come in, and usually there's five or six not-for-profits there. We have buskers that are doing all kinds of entertainment down there. There's always something. Food demos. We partner with the uh, mm. Democrat and Chronicle and have a different chef there every week through our Flavors at the Market program. So every Saturday, uh, food links there with their just say yes to fruits and vegetables program so they do cooking demos on Thursdays and Saturdays so there's so many things to do that's just a Those great demos spot. are so important too because some of the fruits and vegetables you see you really haven't you know you don't know how to cook them right. or <laughs> how to pair them so yeah nice so thanks for coming in Jim well thank you if you'd like more information about events at the City of Rochester Public Market visit cityofrochester.gov slash public market thanks for joining us on this edition of CityWise I'm Tiana Stevens and we'll see you next week there's, there's one, I think.